Alright, so we're back with part two, and we're going to pick up right where we left off. This function here is going to show us, it's not going to show us, it's going to center our promo, the message portion. It's going to center this div in the browser window. It's going to center it, no matter how big the browser is or whatever. So, we're going to create four variables. These four right here. Uh oh. What I do? <laughs> Let me control Z that. I don't know what I did here. Okay. We're gonna create. <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> We're gonna create these four variables: browser width, browser height, promo height, and promo width. So, in the browser width, we're going to use JavaScript. We're going to set this variable equal to the document document ele element by the client width. So browser width is going to be equal to whatever the browser width is. Browser height is going to be equal to whatever the browser height is, the window is. These two, we're going to, the promo height and promo width, we're going to set those variables equal to whatever the promo div is, the height of it. Which again, we're using jQuery native functions, height and width. We don't have to use a bunch of extra JavaScript. Just call this function. It's going to look to our CSS and whatever we defined in our CSS as the promo height and the promo width, it's going to assign to these two variables. Then we're going to say the promo div, and we're going to style it with CSS. Its position is going to be absolute. From the top, it's going to be this variable, the browser height, divided by 2, minus the browser height, divided by 2. That's going to be its top position. And you don't have to put these in parentheses. I do it just because it's easier to read, but JavaScript's going to do the math on this. It's going to do division and multiplication before it does subtraction and addition. So I like putting it in parentheses because you can read it better. So the top position is going to be the browser height, divided by 2, minus the promo div height divided by 2. Its left position is going to be the browser width divided by 2 minus the promo width divided by 2. That's how we get it centered in the browser window. It's that line of code right there. And so here's the jQuery awesomeness. Ah, I like to say awesome sauce, but that's Adam's deal. Uh, I might steal it from him though. I like that a lot. Anyway, the document dot ready function so here we just call our functions now this is I'm gonna show you in a minute if we have time I don't want to run over but I've got these commented out for now because when I use this on my site I'm gonna make it I'm gonna force this on the user I don't know if it's a good idea to do that anyway but for this particular deal we're doing a, a contest with a radio station and we want people to sign up so I'm gonna force it on the, on the user and so when the document loads I'm going to call the two functions, my start overlay and my center promo, and it's going to run these two functions here. The start overlay, we're going to fade it in, and it's going to center it in the window. But I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Anyway, this is what we're doing right now with a button event. Start the overlay with a button event. So we're going to call the button ID and the click function. Another jQuery native function is built in. We don't have to do much JavaScript. The button dot click function, we're going to call the two functions we defined earlier. Start overlay, center promo. All right, to close our promo window, we're going to call the close button, which in this case isn't actually a button, it's just some text right here. We see it changes to a pointer. So I gave this anchor an ID of close button over here in the HTML. This anchor right here. I gave it the ID of close button. And we're just using the text close. So we're gonna we're saying that the ID of close button on a click exit the overlay. This function here. Exit the overlay. We're gonna fade it out. This function is if the user clicks anywhere in the dark area. 
anywhere outside on the page overlay div. Anywhere out here in this div. If they click over here, it's going to close. If they click over here, it's going to close. So I like to give them another extra way in case they don't go up here. Or some people just like to see if that works. So we're going to call that div the page overlay or the ID of that div. And if it's clicked on, we're going to exit the overlay. Pretty neat. I like it. So back here, if we uncomment these out, let's uncomment these. And this is going to happen automatically then when the page is loaded. But let's say we don't want it to happen exactly when the page is loaded. Let's delay it a little bit. So we can just chain this delay function back to our uh, our start overlay function. And this is so cool with jQuery, you can just chain things together. So we'll say dot delay parentheses, and let's make it one second. So 1,000 milliseconds. Oh, hold on. We, I'm sorry. We don't want to put it right there. I'm sorry. We'll chain it right here, right before the fade in. So we're going to say dot delay 1000. And we're going to do the same thing with the promo. Dot delay 1000. Right? Yeah. So when we go back to it, when we refresh, it should start after one second. Uh-oh. What did I do wrong? Alright, sorry guys. So, I had an error down here on line 51. I uncommented a comment and we shouldn't have done that. So, I put my comment right here. is where I had it. So, I commented my comment back in. And we need to remove the comment from these two so we can make this start automatically. So, then back up here, we're going to say delay 1,000 milliseconds. Delay 1,000 milliseconds. Or one second. And then we're going to fade these two things in. So, then file, save. Let's go back into our browser refresh and it should start in a second cool i like it i guess you have to just be careful what you force on a user i think in our case uh what i'm using this for i'm going to force it on them but for you guys if you want to activate it we can do this with rollovers and we can do it with about anything uh the click function so you know i hope you like this i hope it is helpful i mean i know the light box is not anything new um and there's plenty of plugins out there you can do, but I wanted to code one out from scratch. So comment, rate it, let me know what you think. We're out of here.